Now, what do these excitotoxins do inside of the nervous system once they get in there? Well, we know that they can actually alter how the brain forms. That's what's so bad about the little children. We know that when the, the mother is pregnant during that last trimester and during the first four years after birth is when most of the brain is forming. All of these little pathways have to connect, and they have to connect in a certain way. All these dendrites are growing and branching. These synaptic connections are taking place. And that is very sensitive to glutamate. Too much, it destroys these pathways or make them grow in the wrong direction. We know they can destroy certain groups or collections of these brain cells called uh, uh, these nuclei, like the archaeate nucleus, ventral medial nucleus of the hypothalamus. It can destroy it. This nucleus is the most sensitive area of the entire brain. It was interesting during the, the hearings on the uh, toxicity of uh, glutamate, one of the neuroscientists that was working for the glutamate producers made this statement, well, so what if it destroys the archaic nucleus? We don't know whether it does anything or not. But at the time, we knew the archaic nucleus was a very important nucleus in the brain. It's, it's very vital. Another interesting thing is that less than toxic doses, that is a dose that won't kill a cell, will alter its physiology. It'll make the cell overreact. So if it's a cell secreting hormones, they'll secrete too much hormones. If it's uh, one that has to do with consciousness, it may cloud the consciousness. Uh, if it affects memory and it's overstimulated, it may alter your ability to remember. One of the ways that excitotoxins kill is by production, producing free radicals. Excitotoxins are very powerful free radical generators. They make these cells produce all these destructive free radicals that destroy the cell. And one of the interesting things we found out not too long ago is that it impairs the ability of glucose to enter the brain. The brain is almost totally dependent on glucose for its energy supply. Glutamate interferes with the entry of that fuel to the brain. So when you're consuming a diet high in MSG, it interferes with the ability of your brain to get the fuel it needs. Now, let's look at the MSG babies. These were the animals that were first exposed to glutamate. They all had certain characteristics uh, that is repeatable, and this has been repeated ever since this first was discovered. This has been done over and over. We find that the organ weights of the animals are very small. It causes atrophy, a shrinking of various organs. Uh, the uh, ovaries, testes, adrenal glands, kidneys, spleen, pituitary, they all are smaller than normal, significantly smaller. We find that uh, the animals were all grossly obese. And it was in, we'll talk more about this tomorrow, but the obesity is, is similar to what we're seeing in human society now. Uh, with this growth, we're talking about of adolescent obesity. All the kids are real obese, and it's difficult to control. And, and a lot of the, the adults are finding trouble controlling their obesity. We find that it's almost impossible to diet off this old type of obesity. And it's almost impossible to exercise at all because it alters the part of the brain that has to do with obesity. Uh, abnormal reproductive functions are very common with MSG toxicity in these babies. When they become adults, they have very small litters. And this is true even for the males. If you expose the males to MSG, they become infertile or have difficulty procreating. Uh, we find that MSG is frequently associated with unprovoked rage, overt aggression, and antisocial behavior. This is almost always consistent in these MSG-exposed babies. And I'm not just talking about why they're a baby. This is when they become adults. This lasts the entire lifetime of the animal. When the animal gets older, it's, it's filled with rage. It won't associate with the other animals. Uh, impaired cardiovascular responsiveness. You know, when you run, your heart speeds up. Well, that's impaired. It doesn't quite work that way anymore. Uh, we find that animals that are exposed to MSG have very high triglyceride levels, cholesterol, and very low density lipoproteins. And this persists for a lifetime. This puts them at high risk of having heart attacks and strokes, arteriosclerosis. Uh, abnormal hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, that is how the endocrine system works, is permanently altered in these animals. So we see some rather devastating effects to exposing animals uh, when they're babies. 
Now, this is reproducible in every animal species. This is not just peculiar to a mouse. Chickens, horses, sheep, every animal that this has ever been tried on has produced the same thing. So this is a universal effect of monosodium glutamate, and these are all serious things. These aren't feeling bad. Too many people associate MSG with the Chinese restaurant syndrome. And I hear people frequently say, oh, well, I don't get that. I, I, I'm not sensitive to it. It is not an allergy. It is not a sensitivity. It is a toxin. Everybody's sensitive to a toxin. You're sensitive in various degrees. But what we'll see later is that it produces its effects silently. You pay the price later. And you may not associate it with it because you don't think that something you did or fed your baby or when you were pregnant is going to cause them to have a heart attack when they become 30 or 40 years old. Now, we said the brain is forming all these pathways. So this is just an example of the complexity of these connections. Everything has to be exact. And the brain is constantly, during this period, the last trimester of birth uh, inside the uterus and four years after birth, the brain is constantly remolding itself to get it just right. Glutamate is important in that process. It's used for that process, but it has to be an exact level. If it's too much, it, it ruins the connections. If it's too little, it ruins the connections. And these connections are permanently going to be that way. <clears throat> this is a three-dimensional view, so you can see that this, these connections are three-dimensional. They're not on one plane. They have to be in three dimensions connected. It's an incredibly, incredibly complex process. And anyone who doesn't believe in God has seen this. Uh, I, I can't imagine why you don't believe in God because there's no way for us to explain how this happens. And these pathways go the whole length of the brain. So they have a long way to go and they have to be connected just so. And glutamate can permanently alter how these connections and pathways are formed and connected. This is the temporal lobe of your brain. You've heard uh, Vicki talk about the, the hippocampus. It lies right in here, and it has everything to do with your memory. The temporal lobe is very important. We call it the integrative cortex. It connects to all other parts of the brain. It takes everything you've ever seen, done, heard, smelled, and it correlates it. So it's, it's very critical. This is one of the most sensitive areas of the brain to MSG. It's one of the most sensitive areas of the brain to the lack of glucose. And this is just the synapses, how the brain cells communicate to each other to show that even that's a very complex process. It's not a simple process either. That is formed when you're a baby as well, and it's a very exacting process. Now, they knew early on that there are certain endocrine changes that occur with exposure to MSG in these animals. One of the most obvious, of course, is the effect on reproduction. And they looked at the different hormones, and they found out that it altered estrogen secretion. It altered the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus, which controls your estrogen cycle. Uh, it also uh, had an effect on testosterone for the males. So that while they were exposed as a child, it not only affected the nuclei that control these different hormones to be regulated and released, but it altered the pathways in the hypothalamus that made up the control system. And so when these animals became older, their control system was totally different than a normal animal. And this is what's happened in humans. So that when that child's exposed as a, as a small baby or a toddler, when he becomes adolescent or older, and finds they have reproductive problems. They can't have babies. They're infertile. Uh, or they have uh, other reproductive problems. They, they can have uh, trouble with their menstrual periods. They can have uh, polycystic ovaries. So there's all sorts of problems related to hormones that we can trace back to MSG that you normally wouldn't expect. Because when you see the child at age 20 or 25 and they're married and they're having problems having a baby, who would have thought that it was because what that child's mother ate when she was pregnant with the child? But we have good experimental proof that shows it is connected. Uh, we found that even lesser doses, little small doses of MSG can actually call an, cause an early onset of puberty. Loss of growth hormone pulsation, that little nucleus that the doctor said he didn't think it had any function. Its primary function is to control of growth hormone. That's why all these animals are short. 
because it, it, uh, has, it suppresses the pulsating release of growth hormone. Um, and of course, we said it can alter the pathways. Now, let's look at the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus of your brain, if you had to pick a part of your brain that you said was probably the most sensitive to any injury, it'd be the hypothalamus. Uh, doctors uh, kid about it being the seat of the soul. It's about the size of your fingernail on your little finger. It's not very large. But it controls an enormous amount, and you cannot live without a hypothalamus. Major injury to the hypothalamus, you're going to die short the intervention of the law. Uh, if we look at the functions of the hypothalamus, we see that it controls all of the endocrine system, or the growth hormone, thyroid hormone, adrenal hormones, cortisol, uh, all of these things are controlled through the hypothalamus. It controls your sleep-wake cycle, tells you when to wake up, tells you when to go to sleep. If you have an injury of the hypothalamus, you'll stay awake all the time, or you'll sleep all the time. So it's very important. It controls your hunger and satiety. It tells you when you're hungry. It tells you when you need to eat. And this is part of the thought of uh, anorexia nervosa, if they have a problem in the hypothalamus. Uh, we know that uh, it controls the autonomic nervous system. In other words, all these things automatically makes your heart beat so you don't have to think about it, things that make your intestines move along with peristalsis so you don't have to think about it. Those are automatic reactions, parasympathetic sympathetic system. That's controlled through the hypothalamus. And uh, we know that it is a major part of what we call the limbic system of the brain. That's the part of the brain that has to do with your emotions. Uh, it has to do with love, hang anger, fear. Uh, is regulated through the hypothalamus. And if you give MSG to animals, you can produce intense fear or you can produce intense anger. Uh, and lastly, we know, and this is something uh, fairly recently, uh, that the hypothalamus controls immunity. Uh, there's a whole field of psychoneuroimmunology. And this is part of what, if you're under stress, your immune system's depressed, you're more likely to get cancer, more likely to get infected, more likely to not recover from your infection or your cancer because your brain, your emotions, connects to the hypothalamus and that controls your immunity. Uh, we find that in experimental animals, if you take that hypothalamus and you expose the animal to MSG, it will cause a suppression of immunity that will last the entire lifetime of that animal. And if you think about that in humans, if you have a baby exposed to MSG during these critical periods, that could affect their immunity forever so that they'd be at higher possibility of getting in, uh, infections or cancer. If they got a cancer, they have more difficulty recovering from it. So you're talking about some profound life-altering changes here. Now, one of the things that's really intrigued me is the effect on intellectual